To do any kind of archaeological illustration, it's important to make sure that you have the right tools and supplies for the job. In the next few minutes, I'm going to summarize what some of those are, what they're used for, and which ones might work better than others for the purposes you have in mind. You might wonder why we need drawing tools in the first place. Don't we do everything digitally nowadays? The fact is, even though we do use digital methods to finish off our drawings, archaeological illustrations aren't just pretty pictures, they're actually technical drawings. In fact, they're not even supposed to be realistic in the sense of a photograph. Instead, they're highly conventionalized depictions that emphasize some features and de-emphasize others. Drawing also helps archaeologists engage with artifacts and understand them better. Now, whether you're drawing pottery or some other things, uh, there's a number of tools you're going to need. And some of the ones I'm going to talk about are kind of optional or, or old-fashioned. You wouldn't necessarily have to use that nowadays, but some of them are essential no matter what kind of technology you're using uh, to draw stuff. Because even when you're doing digital illustration, you usually start out with a pencil drawing. To do that drawing, uh, we have to have a technical pencil. This is the kind of pencil that has narrow pieces of graphite that can be advanced by a button at the back. Uh, you can also slide it back in with your finger when the, as long as the button's held down. Uh, and you need to have refills for those leads or graphites, uh, which come in little boxes like this because the lead will eventually wear down or break or whatever. Um, so, but when it does break, it's kind of handy to just advance it another millimeter or two by pushing the button. Uh, but those are a critical tool for drawing, uh, drawing pottery. You don't usually want to use a simple kind of pencil like you used in elementary school or something. Um, other things that you would need, if you're going to do the inking by hand, you need to have a technical pen. Uh, these are pens that have um, uh, an ink reservoir inside the handle part, and uh, the important part for our purposes is the tip, which is a very narrow hollow wire that draws the ink onto the paper, uh, and it's at a very uh, carefully calibrated size. This one happens to be 0.2 millimeters, for example, and uh, they're, they come in a variety of size, and normally uh, when you buy them, you would buy them in sets, like this one or this one uh, so that you get a variety of sizes that you would need because for a proper technical drawing you need to have a variety of line sizes. Um, what other tools do we need? Uh, very important tools are triangles, right angle triangles. Um, and right angle triangles, as you'll see later, are very important for certain aspects of the drawing. And the right angle triangle should either have a beveled edge like this one has so that if you do use a, a pen and ink, to draw a line, the ink won't run underneath the uh, triangle and ruin your drawing. Or if it doesn't have that, you can put thick tape on one side so that it raises the triangle a little bit off the paper and that way the ink won't run underneath it. And later on you'll see why these right angle triangles are important. Of course you need rulers and uh, quite often steel rulers are the best way to go. Uh, you can also use plastic ones and whatnot. Uh, the advantage of steel rulers are that you can also use them when you're cutting paper, you can use an X-Acto knife across here and it, and it won't cut into the ruler. Um, and the steel rulers should also have a, a cork base glued onto it so it raises a little bit off the paper so the ink won't run under it. This one, somebody's removed the cork off the bottom for some reason, but uh, normally you want to have those on there. Uh, and a special kind of ruler that's very handy for illustrators, uh, especially if you're drawing things like maps, but it can also be useful sometimes for uh, artifact illustrations when you do them at a scale other than one to one, and that's an architect's rule. Architect's rules are triangular in section, sort of, uh, and they on each face of it, there's a scale at a different scale. So there's uh, this particular one, which is kind of handy for doing maps, has scales like 1 to 50, 1 to 20, 1 to 25, 1 to 100, 1 to 125, and 1 to 75. So those are scales that you might use if you're drawing a map. So what that does is it saves you having to do calculations in your head about how to convert between meters and centimeters or something to get the proper scale. Because uh, if I pick the 1 to 100 scale, for example, um, each one of these increments are really just 1 centimeter increments, but it's labeled in meters. So it saves, does the automatic division by 100 for me. So division by 100 is pretty easy to do in your head, but some of the other scales are not so easy. So uh, this is quite a handy thing to have if you're doing a drawing at something other than 1 to 1. 
Um, it's also important to have calipers because when you're drawing uh, any artifact, you want to make, do frequent measurements to make sure things like the thickness of the shirt are accurate. Uh, so you need to do measurements in various places to make sure that's the case. Uh, we'll see that later on. Uh, another very useful tool is uh, something called a profile gauge. Well, this one's got a little bit of bend in it, which isn't good. Um, anyway, profile gauge is a device that has a whole bunch of metal wires, really straight wires, um, that are held in place either by friction, as in most of them, or the really good ones are actually held in place by magnets. So it makes them a little bit easier to move in and out. And what these things do is that when you press something, an unusual shape up against them, the teeth move in so that you can record the shape somewhat accurately. Um, so it's very handy, especially to measure the shape of uh, potsherds that have very complicated uh, molding and whatnot on them. Um, so that's a very useful thing to have. Uh, it's important to note that when you buy these things at a hardware store or whatever, most of them are very cheaply made with very coarse wires uh, that have very tight friction that makes it very hard to press against an artifact without damaging the artifact. So you want to be careful to get a high quality one. Get a magnetic one if you can, but those I don't even know where you can buy those anymore. So if you're going to get a friction one, you want to at least make sure it has fairly narrow teeth and that the teeth move reasonably smoothly. This one actually could stand a little bit of lubrication to make them move a little bit better. And when you're finished, you can always kind of bang the teeth back to be straight again. Um, for some kinds of drawings, it's also useful to have a protractor, just because you need to measure angles on things. Um, pot shirts, usually not so much, as long as you have better ways to measure the stance and angle. Um, and sometimes you have need for compasses to draw arcs. So this kind of compass has a point at both ends. It's really only good for doing measurements on drawings, because you can set the compass up against a ruler, for example, to me measure a certain amount, and then test it on the, on the drawing to make sure you've got the right measurement. Um, and then you have other compasses, of course, that have a pencil lead at uh, one end and a point at the other end. Those are good for drawing arcs. So those are all tools that you use quite regularly. And then for pottery, a very important tool that's very simple is a stance block. Uh, this would be good for small sherds. And you this is for pressing the rim or base against it in order to make sure you find the stance line because you can trace, if you put this block on a piece of paper, you can trace a straight line on the edge of it, press, put the pot shirt up against it to make sure that you get the angle between the shirt and the stance line correct. Um, it's particularly handy when you have cut shirts, something I'll talk about later. Uh, and then for larger shirts, you need a bigger stance block, either this way or this way, depending on you know, the, whether you've got a shirt that has a very wide opening, for example, you put it this way, uh, whereas one that, uh, some cases you might want to put it this way, depending on the shape of the pot shirt. One very useful piece of equipment is a plastic drawing board. These are available from a number of companies and they all have features that make them far superior to the old-fashioned clipboard. They're ruled in centimeters along two edges, have a right angle ruler that slides along one edge, sometimes with a built-in protractor as here, and perhaps most importantly have very useful clamps around the edges that hold your drawing paper securely in place while lying flat so that they don't get in the way. This last feature is particularly helpful in field drawing, since it secures your drawing even in windy conditions. But these drawing boards are also really useful in the lab, especially as you can remove the right angle ruler when you don't need it. Some of the most basic tools include an adjustable lamp, like this one that clamps to a tabletop, calipers and a divider for transferring measurements from artifacts onto the paper, rulers, including a three-sided one if you have to draw things at other than one-to-one -one scale, right-angle triangles, preferably with two edges marked in centimeters, and possibly French curves. These are plastic templates that make it easier for you to draw smooth curves. You may not need them if you plan to finish your drawing on the computer. A high-quality profile gauge is almost essential especially if you plan to draw pottery. You'll certainly need a technical pencil and replacement leads, and if you do a lot of lithic illustration, you may want to get a crow quill pen with replacement nibs. These are most often used for calligraphy, but they're also an excellent way for you to vary the line thicknesses on a lithic drawing. Otherwise, you may want a set of technical pens, and you'll certainly want plastic erasers and drawing paper of some kind. 
Vellum and Mylar are available both in rolls and in pads. Since digital illustration is so important today, you'll certainly want access to a flatbed scanner. You'll also want a printer so that you can make test printings of your drawings at the scale that will be used in publication. This is critical for making sure that your line weights are heavy enough. You'll definitely need some kind of drawing software that allows you to trace your scanned drawings. You should make sure that this software allows you to turn on and off various layers in the drawing. That's especially important if you need to make several similar drawings, such as a series of thematic maps of a survey region or an archaeological excavation. Because you need to use the same or very similar symbols on many of your published drawings, you should make a sort of template file in which you store your most commonly used scales, symbols, and titles so that they can be standardized across all of your drawings. Finally, if you can afford it or have access to one through your institution, a 3D scanner is an excellent tool that allows you to make cross-sections of complex shapes in any direction you want. This will likely make profile gauges obsolete. It's also a good idea to keep a few illustration manuals around. These may be especially helpful when you come across some drawing requirement that your own project's conventions don't anticipate. If you'd like to learn more about archaeological illustration, you could consult Chapter 21 of my book, The Archaeologist's Laboratory, published by Springer, as well as some of the references cited there, which include standard books on both lithic illustration and pottery illustration. And if you'd like to be updated as I produce more videos on archaeological lab methods and other archaeological topics, uh, please click on the subscribe button down below. Thank you. Stay safe.